Playing rated 3v3 in Shadowlands can feel a bit sweaty at times, and we know there are a lot of you out there who prefer the other side of PvP. So today, we're bringing you a tier list... Shocking, of course. Anyway, we're gonna be ranking each class on how well it performs in duels, world PvP, and normal battlegrounds, giving everyone a score out of 10 to see how they compare. So if you wanna know how your class ranks, or if you're considering a reroll, make sure to stay tuned because this one's for you. But before we get into it, we want to remind you that SkillCap.com is the best place to learn any class for WoW PvP. If you're wanting to take your skills into Rated Arena, we got you covered, and even offer a money-back guarantee if you don't gain up to 400 rating while actively using our website. 400 rating means more gear upgrades, and you already know that leads to more noob smashing in any PvP content. We have helped over half a million players just like you achieve their PvP goals, so what are you waiting for? Visit skillcap.com slash wow to learn more. We're going to be starting with the worst of the worst, and to make things simple, we're going to focus our rankings on DPS specs only, otherwise we would be here for a few days. And remember, this is meant to be fun, highlighting the strengths and weaknesses of each class in non-competitive modes. Unfortunately, Warrior takes our spot as the worst class in non-rated PvP. Generally speaking, Warriors are simply utility bots for their arena teams. Your partner needs appeal? You got some options. Are they getting trained? Intervene. But unfortunately, you can't intervene yourself. Their utility toolkit might work in Arena, but not in duels or world PvP where they easily fall behind due to lacking reliable forms of self-healing. Of course, Fury has some decent self-healing options, but without any external support, they are usually on a timer against other classes 1v1 because a lot of their damage can be easily kited or controlled. This makes it difficult for warriors to pursue enemy targets in 1v1 or even escape skirmish brawls in the open world. And for these reasons, warriors score a 4 out of 10 in both duels and world PvP. VP. In Battlegrounds, they don't really have much to offer other than Spear of Bastion to keep targets locked down in teamfights, and again, without any external support, they can die pretty fast whenever defensive CDs are on cooldown. And to top it all off, Warriors have some of the worst Battleground mobility and can easily be slowed while trying to perform objective-based play. This gives Warriors a low score of 4 in Battlegrounds, and brings their total average to be quite low across the board. DKs are in a relatively similar position, though faring better than Warrior in every category. In duels and world PvP, DKs have a well-rounded toolkit, with core mechanics like Death Strike, Anti-Magic Shell, Spell Warding, and IBF, allowing for a self-sustaining solo experience. Although their mobility might seem a bit limited on paper, Wraith Walk gives them more uptime against slippery targets in 1v1, especially when combined with other gap closers and spell immunities. For all these reasons, DKs score a 6 for both duels and world PvP. In Battlegrounds, DKs have some additional utility options that can help with key objectives. For one, Abomination Limb is one of the best offensive tools to keep enemy players locked down in teamfights. And on the defensive side, AMZ still remains a decent option into AoE spell damage, which is quite common in many teamfight brawls. On top of all this, Death Grip still remains an iconic part of their toolkit on any map, but especially against enemy FCs, where it can be used to pull flag carriers into your team for a sneaky kill. All of this together makes DKs fairly useful in many Battleground settings. We give DKs a score of 6 when it comes to Battlegrounds, bringing their total average to 6 out of 10 for unrated PvP. Moving on to the first caster DPS on our rankings, we have Shadow Priest. Look, Shadow Priests have dipped off quite a bit in arenas lately, and unfortunately, some of that is carried over to solo PvP. In Season 1 and 2, Shadow Priests were dueling kings, and despite some nerfs in 9.2, they can still hold their ground in many 1v1 situations, thanks to most of their damage being usable on the run, and being able to rely on Void Volley to get out some quick damage during Void Form. While all this can make them really good in duels, they fall slightly behind in World PvP, where they might lack the cooldowns and mobility necessary to stay alive during spontaneous attacks. Together, Shadow Priests score a 6 in both duels and World PvP. In Battlegrounds, Shadow Priests are definitely a true mid-tier, but do have some unique utility options for very specific situations. For one, Leap of Faith is really useful in some unique instances, specifically in Warsong Gulch, for gripping flag carriers up the Z-axis on key parts of the map. Map. And for the reverse interaction, Mind Control can be used to run the enemy team off cliffs, which works really well on AB for throwing players off Lumber Mill. While their damage isn't necessarily the best, their utility options and unique abilities are what carries Shadow Priests in Battlegrounds. All things considered, that brings their BG score to 6, giving them a running average of 6 out of 10. Moving on to our next class, Shamans are on a similar power level for all of the non-rated experiences. 
In duels and world PvP, enhancement takes a noticeable lead over Ellie in terms of being able to fend for itself. This is due primarily to the Maelstrom weapon mechanic, which simply gives them more reliable self heals, especially with conduits to help bolster healing surge. When you combine this with Feral Spirits and the Witch Doctor Legendary, enhance can be super durable in many one on one situations. Despite all of this, enhance does struggle in 1v1s against many of the higher tiers, bringing its dueling and world PvP score to 6 out of 10. In Battlegrounds, Elemental can be a super dangerous spec given its enormous AoE damage potential, especially with Vesper Totem when playing Kyrian. Of course, the true power of Shaman and BGs are its multiple team-wide buffs, with Sky Fury and, of course, everyone's favorite ability, Bloodlust. Both of these represent huge damage increases for their team, perfect for teamfights or finishing off PvE objectives on bigger maps. And of course, we can't mention Ellie Shaman without referencing its most iconic technology, Thunderstorm. This ability is great on multiple maps, from knocking plays out of mid on Eye of the Storm, or out of carts in Silver Shard Mines. When you combine all of this with its solid utility toolkit, Shamans score pretty high in our Battleground rankings, and with a score of 8 for our final category, Shamans get an average of 6.7 out of 10 for unranked PvP. Moving on, we have another caster DPS, with Warlocks being another mid-tier option for non-rated content. Unfortunately, they are true mid-tiers when it comes to dueling, and all three of their specs suffer similar problems, that many classes can simply run away or simply line of sight their hard-casted damage without many reliable ways to prevent infinite resets. This gives them a few key losing matchups against highly mobile DPS classes who are able to just run away without getting punished. For these reasons, Warlocks score sixes in our 1v1 categories. Battlegrounds are a different story, however, and Warlocks have some key contributions on select maps. For one, Gateway is an enormously helpful utility option, being able to quickly escape fights and bounce between objectives, which comes in handy on maps like Silver Shard Mines, where you might need to quickly move between nodes. Shadow Rift is another useful tool, especially if someone on your team can combine it with a knock effect. Being able to reposition multiple opponents at once can help ease the pressure your team takes and can help swing key objectives. And above anything else, Warlocks are able to do some crazy damage when allowed to free cast in the back line. And with enough gear, this damage can easily overwhelm healers in intense teamfight situations. This puts their BG score at 8, giving them a running average of 6.7. At this point, we'll be moving on to some of the higher tier DPS for non-rated PvP, starting with Demon Hunters. In 1v1 situations, DH is kind of a mixed bag. Of course, with the incredibly long duration of Metamorphosis combined with some insane mobility, Demon Hunters are able to do a lot of front-loaded damage and can easily kite away when needed. When left toe-to-toe, -to -toe, their self-healing can come in bursts due to the Fodder of the Flame Covenant ability, which of course also gives them a nice damage buff. The main weakness of DH in duels and world PvP PvP is that they get shut down completely by Roots and Novas, which happen to belong to a lot of the higher tier specs. But when free to move, their insane mobility allows them to quickly escape fights when needed, giving them a slight edge in world PvP and in duels. In Battlegrounds, Demon Hunters are really strong, due mostly to their insane mobility and the option to glide across larger maps to quickly travel to key objectives. Their mobility also makes them really good on FC maps, where they can easily stick onto enemy flag carriers who might not be able to keep up with their damage and mobility. In general though, Demon Hunters are just really fun in any BG, since they aren't really restricted at all by the terrain of the map itself and can seamlessly transition between teamfights and objective play. This brings their BG score to an 8, giving them an average of 7.3. Moving on to our next true high tier, we have Mages. While all three specs have their own unique quirks in solo play, Fire is probably the most consistent for most 1v1 situations. For one, it has enormous self-healing potential thanks to its unique Blazing Soul, which will proc a barrier every time Blink is used, which can be as often as 11 seconds thanks to increased conduit levels. And speaking of conduits, these auto-proc barriers will also heal the Mage thanks to diverted energy, and as a last resort, Ice Block itself can even heal thanks to Cryo freeze. When you combine all of this defensive and mobility with CC mechanics like Frost Nova and Polymorph, mages have seemingly unlimited ways to reset the fight and stay alive, which makes them great for both duels and world PvP, where they score 8s in both categories. 
In BGs, their control toolkit is really useful for swinging teamfights, as a single polymorph on an unsuspecting healer is enough to get momentum for their team. Above all else though, Frost Mages have multiple zoning options, with tools like Ice Wall or even simply Blizzard to keep teams separated when playing key objectives, all while being able to guard nodes incredibly well when needed. And it should go without saying that mage damage is really good in BGs when they are actually allowed to free cast, especially as Frost, who have nearly one minute of consistently high damage. Taking all of this into consideration, mages score eights in all categories, making them one of the best options for a solo experience. And speaking of dealing high damage, Windwalker monks are really good at that. Look, it's no surprise by now that their burst is really scary when enough damage modifiers are stacked, but their burst is just half the picture, and it's their mobility that makes them exceptionally good in duels and world PvP. Transcendence is one of the most dynamic mobility cooldowns in the game for any melee DPS, and gives monks a distinct advantage in any 1v1 situation where line of sight is possible or when there is a Z axis. And in world PvP, simply having the ability to instant kite away with rolls, tiger's lust, or flying serpent kick makes them exceptionally good at resetting the fight or just avoiding damage entirely. In battlegrounds, they might not be as strong, and they are often too squishy to stay in teamfights for any prolonged period of time. But one unique control option they have is Ring of Peace, which can be used as a zoning tool to deny flag carriers from escaping, and it can even be used as a ranged interrupt to prevent certain nodes from being captured. While monks might not be the best in BGs, they still score in the mid-range, and their insanely well-rounded toolkit makes them really strong for most forms of non-rated PvP. So now we're at the point where we will dive into some of the ultra high tiers, starting off with Hunter. If you've played any form of WoW PvP, you know how annoying Hunters can be in 1v1s. They can do most of their damage from ranged and while moving, which makes them extraordinarily difficult to pin down and makes avoiding damage incredibly frustrating, especially with mechanics like Steel Trap to keep you completely immobile. If you manage to connect, you then have to play around some broken tools, especially Craven Stratagem if you are any class that relies heavily on dot damage. This can be paired with camouflage for an instant reset, which will give them massive healing per second when they remain in stealth. So in between all of their kiting and reset tools, hunters are a solid option for duels and world PvP. And when it comes to battlegrounds, hunters can be a jack of all trades. As a pet class with stealth, they make really good base sitters, even though it is the least glamorous thing to do. On top of that though, you are probably most familiar with Mark's hunter damage in BGs, where aimed shot combined with modifiers like resonating arrow are able to melt health bars like butter in a microwave. All things considered, hunters score an 8 in random battlegrounds, putting their running total at 8.7. And speaking of melting health bars, turns out Rhett Paladins can do that as well, but you obviously knew that. Anyway, their 1v1 strength should be quite apparent by now, but in case you weren't aware, they are one of the most self-sustainable 1v1 classes around, thanks to highly efficient self-healing when combined with a multitude of cooldowns to rotate. This can make them particularly challenging to kill, especially considering you have to find ways to survive their insane burst damage, which is still really strong even as Necrolord, where they have have even more passive durability. With that said, the damage and sustainability of Rhett Paladin carries over seamlessly to Battlegrounds where they are able to do this. Their insane AoE damage seems to never stop, especially when they have tier sets equipped and Aura of Reckoning selected, giving them continuous wing procs in dense teamfights. While their mobility is not the best, it's far from the worst, and having the option to quickly escape fights and move across the map gives them tons of utility. Because of their commanding presence in teamfights, Rhett Paladins easily score an 8 in our BG rankings, bringing their running average to 8.7. Now it's time to look at the true gods of unranked PvP, starting with Druids. While both Feral and Balance are solid in 1v1s, our kitty friends definitely take a dominant lead in solo environments. This is due mostly to the fact that they are absolute tanks in any duel or open world PvP setting, thanks to key mechanics like Predatory Swiftness, combined with the most efficient self-heal in the game, Frenzied Regeneration. This is on top of the fact that most of their damage comes from bleeds, especially Feral Frenzy, which means they are able to have consistently high damage even when kiting away or playing defensive. And with some of the best mobility in the game, they can easily escape any unfavorable fight when needed. This gives them perfect scores in both dueling and open world PvP. But honing in on their mobility for a second, it is precisely what makes them so valuable in any battleground. 
The ability to quickly move across maps or within bases makes them a jack of all trades in random BGs, especially as Boomkin, where they have insane AoE damage support. Some of their unique BG tech includes Starburst, which is a multi-purpose tool, being incredibly disruptive while also dealing decently high AoE damage. Outside of their mobility and damage, they just get insane value from being able to go stealth, making them excellent base sitters while also giving them the option to go on surprise offensive attacks. For all of these reasons, Druids get another perfect rank ranking in BGs, bringing their average score to 10. Joining Druids, we have the last class on our list, everyone's eternal favorite, the Rogue. Rogues bring a unique dynamic to any 1v1 situation, starting from the fact they are literally invisible the moment any solo brawl starts. This is coupled by their hit and run playstyle, where they can easily reset fights when needed thanks to Vanish. And while in stealth, their self healing is actually really good, especially if they are playing Soothing Darkness combined with the Recuperator PvP talent. Rogues in general are massive execution tests, they are constantly giving you puzzles that you need to solve on the fly, which isn't easy when you are getting stabbed to death. For these reasons, we give Rogues a score of 10 in both solo PvP environments. On the BG side of things, rogues again are absolute kings, thanks in part to one key ability, stealth. Yes, who knew that being invisible is a massive advantage in environments where monitoring enemy positioning is so important? Stealth alone makes rogues insanely valuable on both offense and defense. Defensively, it allows them to easily defend bases thanks to the ability to sap enemy cappers. And offensively, stealth is the ultimate element of surprise, allowing them to ninja assault bases unlike any other class. With spells like Blind and Smoke Bomb, rogues are the supreme base assaulters, allowing them to capture nodes with complete control over enemy defenders. It should come no surprise that rogues score a 10 in our BG category, which puts them at a perfect score to join druids in our solo unranked PvP tier list. With that, we have a complete picture of our final rankings. Keep in mind that our list reflects the potential class has in any of the unranked PvP environments. Your mileage may vary, of course, and things like gear and comp can hold you back, but in general, we think this list is a good reflection of the meta game for the more casual side of WoW PvP. But we want to know your thoughts! Let us know in the comments below what you think is the ultimate class for unranked PvP in Shadowlands Season 3. And while you're doing that, we want to remind you that Skillcap.com is the number one place to learn how to play any class in PvP. We're so confident in your results that we even offer a money back guarantee if you don't improve while actively using our website. With over 600 premium quality videos, there is something for everyone, and joining today will give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where you can ask any PvP related questions and get the answers you need from our team of dedicated experts. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users and visit skillcap.com today to learn more. Alright guys, that about wraps up our video. Once again, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always though, we thank you all for watching. See you soon.